Well, we're doing an accent wall here today, and I'm doing some cut-ins. So I'm getting these cut-ins done. I'm gonna show you, but I keep getting asked all the time, why do I back roll my cut-ins? And if you don't know what those people are talking about, or if you've never heard that term, let me give you a demonstration of what it is. So I'm doing my cut-in, I'm cutting in right here, and I uh, got some really bumpy cut-ins. This is probably one of the most challenging scenarios you can ever have. So I'm using an Ultra, Ultra Pro Linback right here, and the reason why I'm using this brush is it's super stiff. I can cut in these lines right here, and it's working really well with this paint right here. Now I've got my cut in done and I'm gonna just go back and back roll my cut in. I'm gonna try to get this as close to the ceiling as I can and then work my way down a little bit, roll it out just like that. And that's what back rolling your cut ins is. And that's what the term is referring to. So I'm doing my cut in, drawing it like a pencil, like is like, well, I like, kind of like to say the analogy I like to use. Now I'm gonna back roll this, work it down, work it out, just like that. So that's what back rolling your cut-ins is. And so why do I do that anyways? When you take and brush, when you're brushing your cut-in, and I'm gonna brush my cut-in like this, I'm gonna go back and finish it off, it leaves brush strokes. So you got your brush strokes right there, then you're gonna come back and actually roll your wall. So I'm gonna roll my wall, and if this is, for instance, my ceiling cut in right here, I'm gonna cut in my ceiling, and then I'm gonna go back and back brush it. Some people are like, there's no need to back roll your cut in. So that's my ceiling cut in. Now I'm gonna come back and roll my wall, and I'm gonna come up, as close as I can without touching the ceiling. And if you don't back roll it, what you're gonna end up having is you got stipple marks right here. So your roller leaves stippling, stipple marks, and then your brush leaves brush strokes. So you got brush strokes going this way, you've got stippling going that way. And what that does is it shows a difference. It's what we call a halo. And, it's, and what causes the halo is the stippling from the, the roller is a different texture than the brush stroke, which leaves what we call roping. And that's a difference. And what you're gonna see is not necessarily um, a color difference, but you do leave a color difference, and I'll tell you why, but you leave haloing due to texture inconsistencies. Now, if I go back and back roll my cut in, I can bring it you know, within a quarter inch of the ceiling. Now you only have this little tiny stripe that is, it's um, roll, it's is um, a little tiny stripe that's brush strokes. I'm just gonna smooth this out because I don't want it to dry because you'll see that we're actually doing a video how to do an accent wall, so I don't want that to dry. So another thing is, is what happens is when you're doing um, your cut in, I'm gonna talk about this, this is another thing. I'm, I'm cutting in, so I'm cutting in, and I'm gonna leave, come back and back brush it just like that. Now what that does is that lays out your tint or the color it in the paint in one direction. So it's gonna be laying it out forward or backwards according to your final stroke. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna roll my wall just like this. And it leaves the roller, leaves stippling, but it leaves the, the and lays out the color in a different pattern than it is brushing it. The color is gonna stay up on peaks and valleys, valleys, lighter on the peaks, darker in the valleys. So you're going to see a color difference from where you brush it versus where you roll it. So in order to eliminate those color differences and pattern or texture differences, I back roll my ceiling. So I back roll it, and I'm not sure if you can see, but I back rolled it. I got to maybe a half an inch to an inch from the ceiling. If you don't have the ceiling color, you don't want to touch the ceiling because you're not going to be able to touch it up. So it's really a comfort level of how close you can get to it. So the reason why I didn't do the first coat on the walls is that way you would be able to see this video demonstration a lot better, and you'll be able to see the color differences, the texture differences, and um, you'll be able to see the cut-ins a lot 
lot better. So typically, if we're doing an accent wall like this, I'm gonna do one um, coat, and I'm gonna stay away from my ceilings, I'm gonna stay away from my, my edges and baseboards on my first coat, and then we're going to do the cut ends and do our final coat right over the top of that. You definitely want to keep a wet edge. So you're doing your cut ends, you're rolling up while it's wet, so um, it's on a wall like this, you either gotta um, do your cut ends, so a certain portion of the cut ends, and hurry up and roll the wall right behind yourself, or better yet, um, doing using two people makes it a lot easier. So I'm just doing my cut-ins here. And once again, these ceilings are really, there. there is no 90 degree corner or angle in these ceilings. So getting a straight line, especially with a dark color like this, is very difficult. And you want a brush that has a really stiff tip where I can get a nice sharp line. And what I'm talking about the tip is the very tip of the brush. So this is a, ultra, this is a Lindbeck Ultra Pro, and this is an extra firm brush extra firm brush right here. I can get it up there and just use the tip of my brush to draw a line right through all that difficult terrain is what I like to call it. Just like that. Before it dries, I'm going to go back and back roll it. And I always, instead of leaving it right there because it's going to leave it heavy, I come there, come down, and that feathers it out just like that. You can see I've got within half inch so along that line, I'm gonna come back opposite direction, draw my line, come back the opposite direction where stuff didn't get filled, go in the one direction, make any corrections that I need to. Looks like I'd like it a little bit higher. I like to side on going up into the ceiling versus the wall. That ceiling color wasn't completely dry right there so I drug it out a little bit. It's like that and I'm going to back roll it. Feather it out just like that. All right, there you have it, some tips and tricks uh, doing cut-ins, ceiling cut-ins, and specifically, why back roll my cut-ins? I get a lot of questions on social media, on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, you know, why back roll? Hopefully that explains, you know, a little bit about why I do it or a lot about why I do it. If you got any tips or tricks doing cut-ins, let us know down in the comments section below. If this video is helpful to you at all, uh, please uh, consider giving us a thumbs up. It really just keeps encouraging us to make more videos and another way to encourage us making more free videos is hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell that way you get notified every time i come out with a new video on youtube all it does is just sends you an email a little notification that you know we've posted another another uh, video it's free simple easy to do it's been free for 12 years It'll be free for another 12 years we'll see you next time right here on paid life tv out